This production function has labor, capital, and materials as the inputs. This firm has to produce 12 units of output, and it's the short run, so let's fix capital at four machines. Have the input prices all equal to a dollar, and our job is to find the optimal combination of labor and materials to use. By optimal combination, we mean cost minimizing. We'll use the tangency condition, and in this case, it'll be the marginal rate of technical substitution between the labor and materials. So the right-hand side will be the slope of the ISO cost, but in terms of the wage rate, the price of labor, and little m, the price of materials. So this will be the marginal product of labor to the marginal product of materials will be equal to W over M. To find my marginal products, I'll go back to my original production function and partially differentiate with respect to L and with respect to M. This is a symmetric production function, so we're going to get very similar answers. I'll plug that back in. I see that I can do some simplifying on the left. Those 0.5s are going to cancel out. The reason I plugged in 1 for W and 1 for M is because we said that all input prices were equal to a dollar. Simplifying, I get M equals L. So this will be one equation that I use. The second equation, I'll go back to my production function. Now, I know that it has to equal 12, and I know that capital is fixed at 4. So I've made those substitutions. What I've also just found is that M equals L. So I can substitute that in. I've chosen to substitute in for M. So 12 equals square root of L plus 2 plus square root of L. Or 10 is 2 square roots of L. 5 is the square root of L. I need to square both sides to get rid of that radical sign. So 25 is equal to labor. And if 25 is equal to labor, well then that's also the amount of materials. Total cost then in this case will be 25 times a dollar plus 4 times a dollar plus 25 times a dollar or the total cost is $54. So that's the minimum cost for this firm in the short run when capital is fixed and they get to choose the amount of labor and materials. Let's repeat this but suppose it's the long run and so now the firm also gets to choose the amount of capital. We'll use the tangency condition, and in this case, we'll use it twice. So we'll use it the traditional way, where the marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital is equal to W over R. And then we'll also do it between labor and materials, the one we just did. We already solved that through. I'm going to take the shortcut and just write down. We know it's going to be M over L. We will work through the left-hand side, though, and say, oh, well, that's the marginal product of labor over the marginal product of capital. I'll take those partial derivatives and I'll plug in. So k over l is 1 or k equals l. Now I've got two equations and three unknowns, so I'm going to need a third equation. Use the production function. I know that 12 has to equal the combination of these inputs, so that's one of my functions. Then I also know that m is l and that k is equal to l. So I can make those substitutions and say, well, m equals k equals l, or 12 is square root of l plus square root of l plus square root of l. 12 is 3 times the square root of l. 4 equals the square root of l. Squaring both sides, I get 16 is the optimal amount of labor. Looking back over, I say, oh, well, that's the quantity of capital and also the quantity of materials. I can do total cost in this case, 16 times 1 plus 16 times 1 plus 16 times 1, and I get $48. So in the long run, we're able to get a lower minimum cost than we were in the short run, because in the short run, we had that fixed amount of capital, and we could only choose labor and materials.